I think it's fair to say that Microsoft's dual screen phone Surface Duo, or in this case, Surface Duo 2, uh, it's a bit of a strange device. And a lot of people don't immediately know how you're meant to use a dual screen device. And even more than that, a lot of people that are using Surface Duo, surprisingly to some it may be, are actually for the first time using an Android device. A lot of these people held on to their Windows phones for a very long time and have only just recently made the jump to Android. So they may be a little bit lost and they might not know how to best use this device. So in this video, I'm going to go over a handful of my favorite apps to use on my Surface Duo. Like I said, in this case, Surface Duo 2, but this applies to the original one as well. So let's jump into, like I said, my favorite apps on Surface Duo. And we're going to start off with one that's kind of going to be fundamental to the entirety of this video, because as you maybe have seen on all of my videos or on a lot of them, you will notice that I will sort of have my screen here on the other uh, half of this video. And I'm doing this via an app called Phone Link. And this is an application that is built in on your Surface Duo or Duo 2. If you go into your notification shade, it may be in this area here. If it's not, you might have to click on the little edit and bring it in or it might be on another page. You'll see mine is right here. It says RG Boss because that is the dumb name that I gave my computer. And basically what this thing does is it allows you to do a whole bunch of things with your computer. If you long press on this, it's going to open up this screen here and you can click on add computer and go through the setup process. Now at the same time, on your computer, you're going to load up the phone link app. And it's a fairly simple setup process, but once it's done, you're going to be able to send and receive text messages from your Surface Duo to see all of your notifications as they come in. But even more than that, you're going to be able to pick an application here from your phone. Let's do the Play Store and double click on it. And that's going to open up and allow you to use that app on your computer. You can resize it, you can move it around, do whatever you want, or you can do what I'm doing right now, which is actually just casting the entire phone screen. It is a fantastic app. It can also let you take phone calls from your computer using Bluetooth and your, your microphone phone, your headset, really, really great app. You should be using this if you have a Surface Duo or Duo 2. So now let's jump into sort of the body of this video. There is a feature that we are seeing on more and more smartphones as we go further, as AI gets m more and more proliferated out everywhere. And it is the ability to use AI to remove objects from your photos. Google has Magic Eraser. Of course, Samsung has their own version of something very, very similar, which I touched on in a video just the other day. Well, if you want something like that and you don't have a Samsung phone, you don't have a Google phone, there is still a really easy way to do this. You're going to head over to the Google Play Store and search for an app called Touch Retouch. Now, I believe this app is $3.99 by default, but it is well worth it as far as I'm concerned. And once you have it, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. I've talked about it on this uh, channel before, but we're going to do a quick demo now just to show you how this thing works. Let's grab a picture that I want to edit and we'll go from there. Let's click on open gallery and we're going to go with this picture of Rose first because this is one I used in a prior video. We're going to try and get rid of this picture here in the back. So let's click on object. Let's actually make this a little bit easier for you guys to see by going into phone mode and making this uh, screen a little bit bigger here. And so what you do, there's several different options. There's a lasso, there's a brush, there is a, an eraser to go back and erase what you've done. I like to use the brush and what you're gonna do is you can pinch to zoom in and just find the thing you wanna get rid of and you're just gonna paint it, right? So with a lot of the other ones, it will use AI and try to like fill in what you're trying to erase. With this one, you do need to actually fill the object in. It is actually fairly forgiving if you miss a little bit of it. But once that's done, it's going to just erase it. And now if we zoom back out here, you'll see there's still a little bit going on there. That's actually a fairly tough thing to try to erase, but we will kind of go back through and try and erase a bit more of it. And at the end of the day, that's pretty much gone. And if I didn't point that out to you, you're probably not really going to notice that there was anything there. Now let's try this with another option. Let's use these earbuds here. This time we're going to do object. We're going to do lasso, which allows you to just circle it. And it should try to erase it at that point. Now our shadow is still there. So let's circle the shadow. Let's try it one more time. And I'd say that we're pretty close at that point. If we zoom out, the lighting looks a little bit weird. But I think you can take my point. We'll do one more that I 
think it might do an okay job with. We'll just use the brush again. I like to just kind of do the outline first and then go around it like that, get that edge there to get rid of that rock. I think that did actually very well. You would not have suspected that there was a rock there at all. And there's also some other cool stuff here, right? Like lines or meshes. If it detects a straight line, you can see here like that power line, you just tap that line Boom, and it's going to take care of that. How about meshes? Same thing here. A fence, a chain link fence. It will actually do a pretty good job of getting rid of a chain link fence. Now, guys, I've actually done comparison videos. This app versus Magic Eraser before. I'll link to it in the description down below if you want to see more samples. But Touch Retouch is fantastic. So this next one is actually a little bit more recent. I know a lot of people really, really enjoy using Google Chrome as their primary web browser. And until very, very recently, Chrome had the ability, if you click on the three dots up here, to open in a new window. Well, that is now gone. What that would let you do is it would allow you to have two Chromes open at once. And people on Duo really like that. Well, that basically is kind of gone now. What you have to do now is if you span Chrome, and you click up there, you can now do new window. So it, you have an additional action there that you're going to have to do. You have to span the app, then open up the second window. So one, I want to just kind of make everybody aware of that. But two, let's be aware of something else. If we go into Edge, we don't have any such option in Edge, but there is a way to do something really, really similar. So let's go to a website first and let's long press on any link. It does not matter. And then you can click on open in other windows. So that's going to do a very similar thing. So if you really want to be able to get good use out of this dual screen device with your web browser, I would suggest doing it that way. Make sure that you're taking advantage of it in that way. Long press, open another window. Another thing that you can do though, if you wanna be more a little bit more manual about this, is you can use an app cloner to clone Edge, which I've talked about in another video. I'll link down below with a full instruction on that. So if you wanna see that, click on that link. Another option is just go to the Play Store, search for Edge and download you already have Edge, right? But download now the beta version of Edge. So you have two edges on your phone at the same time. So instead of doing the long press open another window, you can just go in your app drawer and open up another Edge. And of course, these are going to behave as two independent browsers because they are. What about a video editor? You can use Google Photos and do some basic video editing, but I think that there is a much better option. If we go to the Play Store once again, and you search for CapCut, this is my pick for the best free video editor. It is by ByteDance to be able to make TikTok, but whatever, it is a fantastic video editor. Let me grab a video here from Google Photos, and there it is. Let's go in here and hit Add, and you'll be able to see here in just a moment the options that you have here. It's really, really solid. You can scrub through this, you can snip, you can cut. There's overlays, there's stickers. If you span the thing across both screens and then if you go ahead and rotate it around, what you'll see here is a really nice layout for editing. You have a whole screen just for your timeline to edit with and then you have your whole upper screen to see what you are editing. It works really, really well. It is a very impressive, very fast, very feature-rich video editor. If you don't want to use CapCut, PowerDirector Pro is another free one. LumaFusion is one you're going to have to pay for, but it is also very good. So this next one isn't necessarily an app, but it's something that you should be doing. You may have noticed that a great thing about Surface Duo is that when you're in an application, let me open up Feedly here, which is my news gathering application. If I were to click on a, a news article, it should open that article in Edge on the other screen. However, you may have noticed that is not always the case. Sometimes it's gonna open up that article, that link, whatever it might be, inside the app that you are using. A lot of apps have their own built-in browser that sucks. We don't want to do that because we have another screen. Why not take advantage of that? What you need to do, and this is going to be on a, on a per app basis, you're going to look for a setting that says something like use in app browser. So let's look for that. Let's click down here and let's go down to settings because I did actually have to turn this on manually. This was not the default setting in a lot of, in a lot of apps. It's not the default setting. And open website directly is what it's called now. We're going to turn that from no to yes to get that behavior. This is one of those things that makes sense for a lot of applications because let's be honest, if you're in Instagram, you're on Twitter and you click on a link, they don't want you to leave their app to go someplace else. They want you to stay in their app. So having you browse the web in their app makes sense. But on Duo, that app isn't going anywhere. It doesn't actually make sense. It's, it's actually a detriment to your productivity 
uh, on Surface Duo. So always, always change that setting. Let's move forward to a couple of apps that you probably have on your Duo that maybe you're not taking advantage of that I find to be very useful. One of them, the first one, is OneNote. And as we go through these, I think what you're going to see is sort of a pattern. What I'm encouraging you to do is to check your apps and see what happens when you span them. Let's take OneNote and let's span it. Now, what you have now is really nice, right? You have the, the list of your notes, your sections, your pages on one screen, and then the note itself on the other. If you need a note-taking app and you have a Surface Duo and you're not using OneNote, you're doing it wrong. It is a phenomenal note-taking app. I was a big Google Keep user for the longest time, but this thing has so many more features in terms of, of formatting and things like that. You see a table there that I've added in that I kind of reference and do things with. It's really good and spanning is awesome. Let's look at another Another app where spanning is actually really good that I think actually will surprise people because you wouldn't think this app would support it. And this is my point. Check your apps. You're, you may be surprised how many of them actually span really well. Let's do TikTok. Let's take it and let's span it. And guess what's going to happen? You have a video on one screen and then your search page on the other. It works really well. And there are plenty of other ones, okay? So Outlook is one that comes on the phone that works well. I believe that the OneNote app does as well. Again, my point, span your apps. You're going to be surprised how many of them work pretty well. This next one is one I get asked all the time. Shane, where did you get your wallpaper from? Well, it's very, very simple. Go to the Google Play Store, search for an app called Backdrops. Here it is right here. It is Fantastic. You will see all these beautiful, amazing wallpapers. They're there for you to download. The only caveat I will give you, the only thing you're going to have to do, make sure you do this whenever you click on one. Don't just click set because it's not going to work out correctly. Long press on it until it downloads it, and then it's going to let you set it in the actual Surface Duo settings, not just set in automatically. You can go in and put it where you need to be, and it'll let you do home screen, lock screen, both, whatever you want to do. And from there, it works really well. I've been using backdrops for my wallpapers forever, and I, like I said, I'm always getting asked this. There's your answer. Another really fun one to try are emulators for retro games. People don't realize how well Duo does with these things. Very, very powerful. Even Duo 1 is still quite powerful. And you can do some really cool stuff with these emulators. Most of them actually work, span way better than you would think. We're going to load up My Boy, which is a Game Boy Advance emulator. We're going to go into Fire, Red, Omega, and let's load my save state really quickly. So obviously, you can play it like this, and I, I like to put it on my left screen, and I can, let's say I've got something going on the other screen. I'm just going to do the Play Store so I don't have to blur anything. But let's say I'm working on something on one screen. Pokemon is slow enough that I can be kind of playing Pokemon on the other screen. Works really, really well. But what if you span it and you rotate it? With just a little bit of tweaking, let me move this up so that you can see it again. You have a scenario here where you have kind of just a giant Game Boy with your controls on the bottom screen and the game on the upper screen. Now, each emulator is going to be its own thing. You're going to have to go into the settings. And you're going to have to go into the layouts. And edit it and do what you need to do with it. But you can move these things around and do whatever you need to do with it, okay? It's up to you to find the settings that work for you, but most of them work. The DS emulator called Drastic, you can do this with. My boys find most of these emulators, it's gonna work way better than you would think it would right out of the box. Or I guess I should say with fairly minimal tweaking. Here's a fun one. Out of the box, this thing uses Swift Key, which is a fine keyboard, but it's missing one really obvious feature. Let's open up something where I'm typing. Let's switch to Swift Key. Like I said, Swift Key's good, right? Like, see how it slides over on one screen, but if you're typing on the other screen, it slides over that way. You, there's a thumb typing thing when an app is spanned. It's it's a very good keyboard, but like I said, it's missing something. So let's switch back to Gboard, which I've downloaded from the Google Play Store. Now we're going to click on the little settings cog. We're going to go to Languages. We're going to click on... Yeah, you click on the one you've already got, the U.S. English, if that's what you're using, and you're going to tick a box on handwriting and hit done. Let's go back to our keyboard now. Now there's a little globe next to that space bar. Click on that, and now you have handwriting input. If you use your Surface Slim Pen, you can now write whatever you want in there, and it's going to work pretty well, actually. My handwriting is, in fact, so bad that I keep this turned off, just because for me, it's not going to be very useful, but for you, maybe it will be.
This one seems obvious, but for some people it hasn't been. What does Surface Duo look like? It looks like a book. Well, go download your reading, like everything's going crazy. Go download your reading application of choice, be it Kindle or the Google Play Books application and span that bad boy and it's gonna work really well. I use Google Play Books, so let's open that up. We're gonna open up actually a manga and let's go ahead and span that thing. And this might be a better, you know, better shown to you this way because it's just really, really good. You can scroll through it. It's got this nice animation like you're reading a book. Guys, it's just fantastic, okay? And like I said, Kindle works really well also. The playbook's fantastic. This thing is a really, really good ebook reader right out of the box. Now, the last one is something that definitely is specific to Surface Duo and an app that you're going to have to go download. Go back into the Play Store and search for Duo Mono. You'll see it right there at the top. That's what it looks like. Okay, what does Duo Mono do? It might confuse you if you just opened up Duo Mono, you would be like, wow, my one screen went black. What a wonderful app. What is the, the point of this? Well, that is the point because the Surface Duo uses an OLED screen, which means that when a screen is black, it is effectively uh, not using any power at all. And that's all it is. It's an app that displays black. You can move it around. The point here being some people, in some instances, want to have one screen turned off when they're in book mode. Not without having to go into phone mode and fold it back around, this allows you to accomplish that task. And it actually even has a quick settings toggle, uh, which you should see. It's on my first screen, actually. Duo Mono, right there. So what this allows you to do is just very, very quickly turn off one of these screens. I'll tell you how I use it. I put my Surface Duo into a dock in my car, First thing I do, I set it in. It holds on to this one screen, and then it just kind of sits like this, right? Well, sometimes I have two things on there. Sometimes it's music on one screen and a map on the other. But what if I don't need both screens going, and I don't want to be wasting battery? Well, I can shut that other screen off. Problem solved. No more battery drain. I'm sure you have a scenario where this makes sense to you as well. Guys, that's pretty much what I have for you. There's a bunch of apps that I really like on Surface Duo and Duo 2 and some tips to get more out of the apps that you may already be using. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button on your way out so that you don't miss out on more content just like this. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.